It's time for this week's CFC Scene. Today will be our last program of the fall 2011 semester. I'm Kyle Apex. Making top news today, has the serial arsonist struck again? Another mysterious early morning fire occurred this past weekend, and again with no clear evidence for police to go off of, college students may begin to worry living downtown. At least 85 suspicious fires have been started in the past decade, and no suspects have been made. So with yet another fire, we asked students how they felt about the still at large serial arsonist, who seems to be targeting young people. I think he targets college students because they make for easy targets, always having couches and easy flammable items on their porches and they're easy targets for him to light on fire in the middle of the night. Considering how many fires there have been and the amount of time that it's happened and there's a trend that it's target or they're targeting college students, I don't feel safe at all anywhere downtown. I've heard that he's been setting, he or she has been setting fire to objects that are on the front porches and that especially is a, an issue for me because we leave stuff on the porch sometimes and I never really thought about it so I've been taking some precautions and trying to tell my residents to not leave stuff on the porch that would be easily flammable. Next with final exams finally here, students may already be feeling the stress that comes with this time of semester. The College of Charleston's Cougar Countdown, a mix of academic support and fun activities to, for students to relieve some stress throughout the week have been arranged. Brad Horn, a junior at the college, feels that the college does a great job of keeping students' stress levels down. Yeah, I mean, I feel significantly less stressed, uh, you know, especially at this time when everybody should be a little bit stressed. Uh, I've noticed a pretty big uh, feeling around campus of a lot less stress going on. Alex Pesquet, a junior, also enjoys being able to get rid of some much-needed stress. I think it's a great thing what they're doing. Um, I mean, I... I study and then take my break and go into the activities and I uh, have a great time there and I kind of just lose track of that, that I'm even studying for exams or even having finals or anything like that. And Some activities include mini massages, meditation classes, study breaks with free food and yoga. Next, what's most likely a student's favorite time of the semester, book buyback. Students have the option of selling their book back at two campus bookstores and also at tents conveniently located throughout the college's campus. The one problem, however, is that students in most scenarios won't even get back half of what the book could cost initially when first purchased. Regardless, though, of that issue, students won't be complaining about a little extra spending money to help celebrate the end of the exam. Now that presidential candidates have been coming to campus for, to campaign for their election, the College of Charleston has made sure to take advantage of it. The college's political science students are competing with Republican presidential candidates Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich, Students will be given a chance to present plans for reform in the U.S. Congress. Thus far, students have presented a broad range of reforms, with no two proposals the same. Proposals include electoral, electoral changes, as well as changes to Congress's internal rules and procedures. In other news, the College of Charleston School of Business will partner with Junior Achievement of Coastal South Carolina on December 15th to host a free forum for high school students to encourage entrepreneurial thinking, educate on financial literacy, and participate in a competitive online business simulation. The forum will be held in the college's Betty Center at 9.30 in the morning. In other news, the College of Charleston is on the cutting edge of what could be the future of sports television for small schools after purchasing a video production van outfitted with all the necessary equipment to produce its own broadcast. I asked Josh Bryson, the college's director of operations in the athletic department, what Cougar fans should expect from the college's newfound technology. It really gives more people the opportunity to do it, um, to be able to watch what we're doing. The other things that it does is it gives us the opportunity to be able to put more on than just men's basketball. The only school in the Southern Conference producing its own broadcast and would produce 11 men's basketball games this season, including three on the road. Each game can be viewed on ESPN3, a streaming internet service that reaches more than 70 million households worldwide. Now on the sports. The College of Charleston's men's basketball team will host Tennessee on December 14th at 9 o'clock at night. Senior Antoine Wiggins leads the 7-1 Cougars into their one of their tougher tests of the 2011 season. On the other side, the College's women's basketball team plays at Davidson on December 17th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The Lady Cougars come off their second win of the season, bringing their 2011 record to 2-5. And, and finally, before we sign off for the semester, have you ever wanted to eat pancakes shaped like a cougar? or better yet, pancakes made by President George Vinson? Well, on Friday, December 9th at 8 o'clock a.m. at Rivers Green, the President and his executive team will be doing just that, making breakfast for students as they prepare for exams.
That wraps up this, this semester of CFC Scene. It's been a pleasure bringing you the news this school year. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, and for CFC Scene, I'm Kyle Aitad. Thank you.